and I'm really pleased to be joined now by Shadow Home Affairs Minister Senator James Patterson, who is, I think, frankly, one of the clearest thinkers we have on issues around China, defense, and cybersecurity. Now, Senator Patterson, thanks again for coming on. The big news today is that acquisition, or the deal to acquire, $1.7 billion in Tomahawk cruise missiles. But a couple of things strike me about this. One, wasn't this deal basically announced back in March, so it's not a lot new there. And two, I read Defense Minister Richard Marle's announcement backwards and forwards, and I still can't see any even indication of when we might actually get this hardware. Is it time to stop announcing and start actually acquiring and deploying, Senator? James, it's a very fair question. It's certainly a welcome decision uh, that the government has announced today because the Tomahawk is perhaps the most fearsome precision-guided munition available on the market today. It's previously only been exported from the United States to the United Kingdom and it now will be exported to Australia too. The ones we're buying have a range of about 1,500 kilometres. They are lethal, they are targeted, they can be deployed from a range of platforms and there's no doubt that it will raise doubts in the minds of a potential adversary who's contemplating, for example, deploying a surface fleet in our region. But, as you point out, in fact it was the decision of the former coalition government almost two years ago to acquire these uh, missiles. It was approved by the US Congress six months ago and this government has previously announced this. This seems just like an announcement for the sake of an announcement and no progress on deadlines or timelines or delivery. And we are living in the most urgent strategic environment. And you don't have to take my word for it. The government's own Defence Strategic Review said that. But we just don't seem to have the sense of urgency and purpose from the government on those issues, let alone the money to back it up. Yeah, and just around that sense of purpose and urgency, you know, I was watching some of the stuff that came out of the Labor conference over the weekend. I was heartened to see Labor's Pat Conroy say strength deters war. But at the same time, there's been an awful lot of people in Albo's, the Prime Minister's own faction, disagreeing disagreeing with this. I just reckon that Xi Jinping and a lot of other leaders must be looking at the state of labor on this and laughing. What do you make of it? Well, it's probably not a coincidence that they waited until after their conference to make this announcement on the Tomahawk because they didn't need any more grief from their left-wing branch members. Look, credit to Pat Conroy. He is one of the few ministers in the government who's willing to really plainly state the need for this kind of investment and this capability. Um, a lot of the other ministers in the government walk away from stating quite plainly that this strategic environment is dire, it is existential, and what is at stake is whether or not our children and grandchildren inherit from us the sovereign liberal democracy that we inherited from our forebears. And I think we have a very solemn duty to make sure that they do uh, inherit that from us. And if this government doesn't get its act together and match the rhetoric with dollars and action, then we are going to be put in a very dangerous uh, position and a very weak position. And we know what weakness encourages. And I think you're absolutely right to call out people on the Labor side who really do stand up for things like Pat Conroy, so good on him. But I did notice, again, that a lot of the unions were talking about this defense uh, policy really from an industrial perspective. Do we make a, a mistake sometimes, Senator Patterson, in this country in confusing defense policy with industrial and jobs policy? Absolutely we do. And I was frankly quite worried to hear the Prime Minister try and sell AUKUS to his left-wing branch members and unionists by saying that there'll be a whole lot of jobs in it and there'll be unionised jobs. Well, I'd be very interested to know how he plans to ensure that the workers who go and work on these projects are forced to join a union and whether or not having these unions in these workplaces, frankly, is going to increase their productivity, particularly when some of these unions are themselves opposed to AUKUS and campaigning against them. Uh, but, I mean, the most important thing, particularly in a strategic environment like the one we're in, is getting the capability and getting it as soon as possible. It's a nice bonus if you also get employment and jobs out of it. And, yes, there is role for Australian defence industry right through the supply chain through AUKUS and that'll be transformative for them. But the main purpose is to get the things we need to help defend our nation in a time of very great, grave danger.